Uh, hi, this is Joe here with another movie review. For the sake of this video, we're going to be doing a, a 1991 baseball movie, one of the few baseball movies that I haven't reviewed yet. Um, and that's 1991 movie Pastime. And of course, there's Wayne Russ and uh, Glenn Plummer. Of course, this movie, and also it has Jeffrey Tambor in it. Um, this movie is, let's put it this way, it's not the one that greatest baseball movies ever made. It's definitely, it's definitely pretty forgettable. Um, it's about, well, William West, of course, those of you who know who he is, uh, if you ever seen him in television show, Boy Meets World, he plays uh, ben, Savage, ben Savage's father in the Boy Meets World television series. Well, he plays a, an aging pitcher who's been in my links like forever, almost kind of like a Crash Davis type character. But instead of being a catcher, he's a pitcher. He's like a 41 year old pitcher who's been in my length like forever. And they throw in a few games you know, of the season already, right? like in the first week or two weeks of the season. And they get a new baseball player. And it was a black player. And the reason why I'm making an issue out of it is because this movie is supposed to take place in 1958 in Central California. I think it was the same year when the Dodgers and Giants moved up to California. So they still have my league system out there. I, th I think they st still might today, like the Pacific Coast League. Uh, but anyway, uh, you see this young, like 17 year old black pitcher, and of course, as you saw, the white players aren't exactly filled with this guy. Uh, was was really only one guy. It was Rick, Ricky Paul uh, Golden. I think they this young pitcher who doesn't give a rats behind. But anybody except for himself, and he doesn't like the William West character. He's not the only one who doesn't like the William West character. The owner of the team, like I said before, played Jeffrey, was played by Jeffrey Tambor. He wants to get rid of, rid of the character, and, and the character's name is Roy Dean Green. He wants to get rid of Roy Dean because he's 41 years old. And for no other reason because he's 40, a 41 year old pitcher. Uh, playing in the minor leagues, he wants to get rid of the guy because he's too old. It's not that they can't get anybody out anymore, it's just the fact that he's too old. He's 40, he's 40, he's 40 he, the man, and there's one line when he's talking to the manager, the man is 41 years old. He calls him Methuselah. Uh, we got Methuselah out there, I mean, the, the guy, the, Methuselah is a joke, we have this guy on, the, on our team. The man just defending him, said, so, look, he can get more guys out than Anyway, it's the best relief picture that I have on, on this team. He says, why well, don't care? Is you can in this guy. He says, I, I want him gone as fast as possible. And, and of course, the manager is sticking up for him. He says, hey, I want him on my team. He can get, he, he get, he get gays out. And if he didn't get stiffed in, by the major league club, he will still, you know, be in the majors. And of course, he sees this young black pitcher. And, or uh, the White Dean character, he says, hey, this guy, this kid could have, you know, he has a great fastball, he has the stuff to be in the major leagues. And his first day there, or at least the black character was, uh, I think it's Tyrone, uh, all of a sudden, Roy Dean becomes instant friends with the Tyrone character because they're both pitchers, you know, they have a common bond. And he doesn't care, and he even says to him, look, I don't care what you're, Skin color, whereas you have this talent to be in the major leagues. You have the, you have the talent, you have the arm, you have the, you have the smoke, you have the fastball. And then, of course, Roy Dean tells Tyrone, say, hey, I was in the majors. He tells a story about how he was playing a quote unquote day game in Wrigley. Of course, you know, the problem with that is they didn't start playing night games until like 30 years later, in 1988. Okay? So that's one this problem they had with this movie is that hey, they, they only had day games there in Wrigley Field. They had day games there for at least for the next 30 years after, after when this movie's supposed to be. It'll be 1958. So they're not going to have a, a night game in Wrigley Field until like 30 years later. Okay, in, in 1988. So, so that's this continuity thing. Um, of course, he tells the story about how he's playing in Wrigley Field. He's playing the stand, pitching to stand usual. It was a two and two count, and he had a grand slam home run off me. 
And that's the and that's the only time I've ever been in a major league game. And it gave up a grand slam to um, Sam Usual. And then of course he also tells Tyrone that hey, I've been in uh, the fourth amount of games in all, all time. Of course it comes practically all in the minor leagues. And so if I'm running six games behind uh, for the most games, most appearances ever, we're only six games behind this guy. I mean, Jack Quinn, he, he pitched more games than anybody in history, he pitched when he was 50, and we're only six games behind him. Says, well, anybody going to tie with that kind of record? He says, well, yeah, because, because he, wants to keep, he wants to keep pitching, he wants to keep playing. And even though he knows that his best day is. You know, YD knows his best days were behind him, but he wants to keep playing anyway because he loves loves the game. Now, of course, one, uh, of course, summing up uh, the Ricky Pongolan character makes fun of the fact that hey, uh, how come all of a sudden Roy Dean's hanging out with the, with the, with his with his kid? But, and that's if it has to be his own trial. Why is he hanging out with him for? He's not, he's coaching the kid. That's not his job, and he keeps complaining that what Roy Dean is. is Doing with his kid, getting his kid tips and all that type of stuff. And the man says, "Look, let him be, because it, because what the Ricky Paul Golden character is a trouble. It's not about a troublemaker." Uh, then, of course, it gets to a point where uh, the the team will call the C Steamers. They play a game and went extra innings, and Y Dean cost seeing the game by throwing a wild pitch and of course the owner now says okay we're getting rid of him now no, no, it's, pack, it's, it's like unofficially released from the team and everybody knows that except for except for Roy Dean and they have this party and they're making fun of Roy Dean because he's still being there and, he, and Roy Dean's uh, date ran to be the bartender of a local of a local bar in the, in the town that the team plays in and they're making fun of the some of the stuff she's saying and what she's wearing and the big earrings and making fun of her for, and, and the other wives or girlfriends of some of the other players for making fun of her uh, for what she's wearing and she feels disrespected so anybody who's older than they are they really making fun of them and this movie really looks bad for somebody who's in the 40s I mean that's a, that's a, I mean they disrespected everybody and then of course the troublemaker play the Ricky Paul Golden character told Roy Dean it's been nice playing with you. <laughs> they pretty much told him that he they got released. Then he talks to the to the Jeffrey Tamor character, so yeah, I want you you are released. We're gonna be releasing you for your contract. But you can come to my office and we can give you like I'm open to give you a um, coaching position somewhere. Somewhere in the somewhere in the organization or, or on the team, but you're not gonna be playing with us anymore. That that's for, that's for sure. And of course, Roy Dean gets, you know, he, he's ticked off about it, he's upset over it. And the scene where he's singing by himself in the car, he's punching the ceiling, he's punching the horn, and shake, shaking, shaking the car up. And he breaks down and cry. He pulls a room of floors, okay? For those of you who are talking about, room of floors was a shortstop for the Mets. And he th uh, thought he was going to be traded at the trade deadline. He was crying on the field. Same thing with him. And he wants to prove to himself to everybody that he can still pitch. So he breaks into the stadium, puts his uniform on, goes to the pitcher's mouth. And I'm not talking about the bullpen, I'm talking about on the actual field. And he starts throwing pitch after pitch, harder and harder and harder. And all of a sudden, of course, what happens, he drops out of a, he literally drops out of a heart attack. And of course, the young, uh, the Glenn Plummer character, he, he's, Looking, looking for Roy Dean and said, "What the hell? What, where is he?" Then he realizes that the lights are staying on and it's supposed to be off because not they were not playing that that day. So he goes into the stadium and found found he ends up finding him dead. Right? Or he found him dead on the field. So on the day of the funeral, they have a game. They couldn't catch the game, so, so that the whole team go to his funeral. I mean, that's how Roy Dean was treated. I mean, the team. Jeffrey Temple says, look, a player die, let's cancel the game or at least delay it so at least we can go all go to the, to the funeral. Um, 
They didn't do that. They didn't cancel the game. They, they didn't do anything. Only the manager and Tyrone went to, went went to the funeral. And then they go to the game. And then they take then the manager takes out the troublemaking the Ricky Paul Golden character to take him out of the game. And they put Tyrone in there. And of course, Ricky Paul Golden says, Hey, why don't we win this one for old Roy D? And Tyrone comes back to the dark out and actually of course they get into a a fight. Because of course we all know how this character or the Ricky Paul Golden character treated uh Roy Dean and they get into a big fight in the dugout and then of course eventually they, they broke it up and then the other team and then when the steamers which is the team that was featured in this movie was back on the field uh, the manager says to Ricky Paul Golden the one thing they won't tolerate in my ball club is a pain in the ass go clean your locker out when he's getting rid of him um, so of course by the end of the movie you see Tyrone pitching for the Chicago White Sox, uh, which of course I guess is supposed to be the, you know, the parent club or the or the team, uh, the major league team that this minor league team is affiliated with, and that's how pretty much how the movie ends. But the movie itself, it's quite. I mean, it's a decent movie. It has a decent story. I'm not complaining about the story, but for but to me, it falls flat. A, a little bit and, and me I like baseball movies as you can tell I'm a big baseball fan if you see a lot of my videos I'm always being most of the time being a mess shit uh, so I'm a big baseball fan but this movie was had an interesting, had an interesting premise had a good premise to it but to me it falls flat to me it falls flat in a lot of the ways I do I did like the relationship between William Wesson and, and the Glenn Plummer characters and the manager and and uh, William Russell's characters and I, I think I think those relationships, but the rest of the movie falls. Like I said said before, I falls flat because it's kind of, kind of dull, kind of like a dull baseball movie. But but it is entertaining. It is what it is, and it's interesting enough to um, you know, you know if you're a baseball fan, if you if you like baseball movies. You know, I, I do recommend watch this movie to, to, to see it once, uh, once maybe twice, and that's pretty much for, pretty much for this movie. So that's my review of uh, the movie Pat, the 1990 uh, one movie pastime. Please click on the video, please rate it. Please subscribe to my channel. Please forward this video onto your Facebook pages. Like I said, in the last couple of videos, you're not going to be able to make co write comments or post comments on these videos. Uh, because a neighbor of mine ruined, ruined that for for everybody in the world ruined, ruined it. They, the Hellman family, who lives in my co-op in, in, Queen, in Queens, New York, they ruined it. They ruined that feature for everybody. They ruined it for me. They ruined it for anybody else who wants to make comments on these on my videos, both good and bad videos, because they have nothing else better to do to call me something I'm not. So because of that, you're not going. To, that feature is going to be disabled at, le at least for the time being. It's still going to be disabled. So you're not going to, do, unfortunately, make any more comments. So like I said before, you, you can still read it, read this video. Please subscribe to my channel, and you can please forward this video onto your Facebook pages. You can also check out all my videos so now on my YouTube channel, but at rallyc.com. It's all W D Y. Let us see dot com. That's a homepage of the Rally Reviewer, Christy Moore. Check out all of his videos on his website, his TV trash videos, plus all the videos on all the other videos on his content, on all the other content on his uh, website. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.